Hello and welcome back. We are going to see about DynamoDB streams today and how to access the stream data using Lambda functions. You can enable DynamoDB streams in any table and the moment you enable it, whenever any application inserts, modifies or deletes the data in your table, the modifications are automatically streamed and this information is available for 24 hours. The data is time ordered and you can set exactly what needs to be streamed we have few different options here and we'll get to it in detail in few minutes. Then you can attach a Lambda function to the stream which will be invoked synchronously and you can do whatever post processing you want to do within this Lambda function. There is also an IAM role attached to the Lambda to provide various access and CloudWatch logs to monitor the Lambda errors. So that was a quick overview of the DynamoDB streams. Now let's get into the AWS console and get started. Okay, so now we are in the AWS console. We're going to start by creating a DynamoDB table. There is a separate video about DynamoDB table creations and the various settings. If you'd like to watch that, I'll leave the link of that in the description below. So I'm naming the DynamoDB table as books and let's go with the partition key of author and sort key of book title. And with the table settings, I'm just going to make one minor change. I'm going to customize the settings and set the capacity as on demand instead of provisioned uh, so that it automatically changes the uh, capacity based on our usage. And then go ahead and create the table. So this is very simple, straightforward creation. If you want to know more about each and every setting, please have a look at the other video. And once the table is being created, we can get into the update settings section and go and enable the uh, stream. So under update settings, you will have a separate subsection called export and streams. And under that, you will find DynamoDB stream details. And initially, that will be disabled. You can enable it. While enabling, you have four different options. That is the data that will be sent to your stream. That is whether you, you want keys only or new images, or just the old images, or both the new and old images. So if you're going to go with a new and old images, it differs based on your use case. So it's it just enables in a second. And you can see the status is enabled. So once it's enabled, now we can go ahead and create a Lambda function and attach to it as a trigger. So we are creating a trigger. Uh, if you have a Lambda function already created, then you can attach it here directly. As we don't have one, we are going to create a new Lambda function here. I'm going to go with author from scratch and give a Lambda function name. I'm just going to call it as books DynamoDB stream. It's pretty simple and straightforward and easy, easily identifiable. And I'm going to use the runtime as Python. Uh, it's Again, it's up to you. Whatever language you're familiar with, you can go with that language and then create the function. All right, so after creating the function, what we're going to do is make a quick change to the role uh, because the DynamoDB stream expects the Lambda to have certain policies uh, enabled in the role. So once the function is created, uh, before editing the role, I'm just going to print the event so that we can see what exactly we are getting as the data and then get into the configuration section. And under that, you will see a separate subsection called permissions. Under that, you will have the role name which is created by default by AWS for us. And now we are going to go ahead and edit the policy within this role. So click on the policy. And here you will have the default permissions for the log group. Uh, now we are going to add permissions for DynamoDB as well. So under services, choose DynamoDB. And it requires four different actions. Those are to get the records, that is to get the records from the stream. And then to get the iterator, so that is to iterate uh, the different records. And then to describe the stream and to list the stream. So those are the four, uh, four actions that are required. 
and without this you will not be able to attach the lambda function within the trigger so even if we try to do that uh, DynamoDB will automatically throw back an error saying that your lambda function should have all these four uh, permissions so now if you are going to make these four uh, actions specific to this particular DynamoDB table. So I'm going to quickly grab the stream ARN. So there is a separate ARN for the stream as well as there is a separate ARN for DynamoDB. So this is different from the DynamoDB's ARN itself. So once you grab that, put in here and then review the policy and save the changes. So now you should be able to attach this lambda into the trigger section. So let's go ahead and try doing that. So in the triggers, once you refresh, you should be able to see the new function that we created. And this batch size is how long DynamoDB has to wait until it streams the data into your lambda. So it can be set anywhere from one to 10,000. So right now I'm going to leave at one so that for every single change, your Lambda function will get invoked. So if you set it to 10, then for every 10 changes, your Lambda function will get invoked. All right, uh, so now we have everything set. Let's go ahead and create few entries and see how it works. So I'm just going to create an entry with an author name and then a book title. I'm going to create the item. So this should result in an insert record event. So now if we go ahead into CloudWatch logs, because remember we printed the event. So if you go into Lambda and then get into monitoring, you should be able to see that event being printed. So the, under the logs, there you go. So you have the event printed which has a list of records and we will get into the details of the record in a minute. Before that, I want to uh, perform two more actions. One is to edit the record and other one is to delete the record. So I'm going to just edit the existing record and just adding a random attribute. And this get trigger, triggered even when you uh, remove an attribute, add an attribute, or modify an existing attribute. All the three changes are considered as modify. So if you refresh, you should be seeing a record for uh, modify as well. And finally, let's go ahead and delete the record. And this should get recorded as remove record. Okay, so with that being said, I'm going to pull all the three records and then I have put it in the uh, visual editor for us to go through it in detail. So if you see that is uh, you each record will have an event name, which is insert, modify or remove. And then there is some metadata information like the event ID, event version and stuff. And the main thing which we are interested is the is under the DynamoDB object which are the keys, new image, and if there is an old image, then you will have the old image as well. So those are the four types that we saw. So as we selected both the new image and as well as the old image, so you will see all the information in detail. Depending on what uh, type you're selecting there, only that particular information will be passed across in your event. As it was an insert record, we just saw the new image. And here, this is a modify record. So you will be seeing both the new image as well as the old image. So in the new image, you can see that there is an extra attribute, whereas the old image doesn't have that. And there is a sequence number attached which, uh, with each record. So this sequence number will be in increasing order so that uh, the previous record, so that you can identify the records in sequence. That is what we call as the time ordered uh, sequence. And it also comes along with the size bytes. And finally, the remove event. So this event will just have the old image because we are removing the record. There is no new image being created. And otherwise the syntax remains the same. Hope you found this useful. If you have any questions, please leave them in the comments below. See you soon in the next video. Thank you.